What is up, YouTube? Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys the next video in my ESO Veteran Hard Mode Dungeon Guide series. And today we are going to be covering Veteran Hard Mode Banished Cells 1. So this is very, very similar to, again, Fungal Grotto and Spindle Clutch, where the version 1 dungeon is really not that hard, and the version 2 dungeon is much harder, but this is where we kind of begin to see things get a little bit ramped up. Banish Cells is not nearly as easy as Spindle Clutch 1 or, or uh, Fungal Grotto 1. It's still not an overly difficult dungeon, but it definitely isn't as easy as those two. And Banish Cells 2 is actually a very challenging dungeon, especially for pugs. Um, I know even sometimes in pre-mades, and you'll be able to see when I actually do cover Banish Cells 2, that my pre-made actually takes all a long time to kill the final boss just because me and the DPS I was running with were in PvP builds, um, so we really didn't have the DPS to take him down quickly, so the fight took a very, very long time, especially the final boss. But I'll cover that dungeon that when I actually do the video on it. But this is Banished Cells 1, and as you saw in the first room basically when you walked in there's going to be a lot of skeleton ads going to pretty much be the theme of the dungeon lots of undead and skeletal based ads and the first two rooms really aren't too bad it's just you know don't stand in the conal aoe's don't stand in the um the tar on the ground that the, eventually they light on fire that will deal flame damage to you it really isn't anything too crazy just your pretty standard um ad mechanics and you're going to head down this path, as you guys can see my mini map on the right, so you can see the path that we choose to take. There's just going to be a lot of various uh, skeletal packs as you make your way to the first boss. And in this dungeon, the the main bosses that will really challenge you are the second boss Shadow Rend and the final boss High Kin Lord Rillis. The other the other bosses I don't think are aren't they aren't nearly as challenging. Um, but those two, I know, have definitely messed groups up before. But we're going to move into our first boss, and that is the Cell Haunter. So he's very, very easy. Um, you have these two ads on the side of him. They should be dealt with first. You know, stereotypical ad fight. Just take those two of them down, and now you really just have the boss to deal with. Now, he has a mechanic where he'll use a health leech and he will basically cast a green beam towards a player and siphon health it can't be blocked or interrupted so you kind of just have to heal through it but it doesn't really deal too too much damage but all you all can really do is heal through it he also summons an ice tornado that basically will go along the ground but if you simply dodge roll out of the way you won't have to really worry about it. And then the other attack that he has is he fires a, like, magic missile at you that deals some damage, but um, it's really not that much, so you can pretty much just kind of take it. But as you can see, during he does try to charge up one of those attacks. I'm not specifically sure if it's the ice tornado or the uh, the missile that gets charged up, but you can see, you saw the, the charging animation on him where he was ch about to channel a spell. So all you have to do is simply bash that, and you just won't have to even deal with it. So as you can see, really easy. Really, really easy. We only really had to deal with the health leech for the most part. Um, otherwise, it really wasn't all too bad. Very, very easy boss fight. So we continue down the caverns, and we're going to actually move into the area where our second boss fight is, and the next boss fight is going to be Shadowrend. But before we actually kill Shadowrend, we have to take care of these adds first. So as you can see, our tank brings them all in. Drop, We're dropping the AOE, taking them all down really, really quick. Our tank does a very, very good job of keeping the adds very well grouped up making it really easy for us to kill them. So now that you see the ad packs down, you don't see a boss, what do you do? So there's these buttons on the sides of the room that you can see our tank running and clicking. You need to click those buttons. Those buttons will then summon a pack of ads, and then you simply kill the ads, and then click the next button. And then once you click the buttons and the ads are summoned and killed, that's when the boss will actually be summoned. So that one on the far side of the room summoned a bunch of Banekins, so we just take them down relatively easily and then our tank moves over and goes to press the second button as you can see on my mini map he's going to the right and then it will summon a group of what exactly is summoned here summons the boss actually just kidding i thought it was two ad packs i was incorrect so he just summons the boss straight away um so we start actually attacking shadow rent now shadow rent has a couple mechanics that you need to worry about one is this tail swipe aoe that you see it's a 360 aoe around them this will deal some damage so you need to make sure that you're blocking it or standing out of the way and then as you can see the second mechanic is he'll summon a shadowy version of himself that actually deals just as much damage as the boss itself but it's relatively weak in terms of resistance 
in HP. So you really should do your best to take it down as quickly as you can. The other mechanic that Shadowrun has besides this 360 tail swipe and the Shadow Clone is it will charge and... Um, basically stun an enemy and deal continuous damage, but you need to simply CC break out of that to prevent yourself from from taking the full damage of that. So as you can see, he charged onto our healer here. Healer CC broke, dodge roll away, and you see it does deals a considerable amount of damage. So you really need to make sure to be on top of your of your CC break to get yourself out of it. Or I do believe that a group mate can actually run over to Shadow Ren and bash Shadow Ren. So let's say the person that it goes on to is out of stamina and can't CC break. A group mate is able to still go over to that person, bash the boss, and free them. But that is Shadow Ren, one of the more complex um bosses in this dungeon and as you can see even even it was still really wasn't all too bad so we continue down and we get more skeletal ads you know pretty much the same mechanics from all of the ads throughout the whole dungeon just you know the, the tar aoe on the ground and the conal from the um from the archers which can actually be bashed which can be bashed so this is our next boss. We have Ungada the, Clare, the Clan Fear Handler. So this boss fight, very easy. Just has a lot of adds around her that if you simply clump up, you can just knock right down as you can see how quickly we deal with all those adds. And then afterwards, you pretty much just have the boss to deal with. And her only mechanic is that she summons Clan Fears. That's it. So as long as your tank keeps the clan fears taunted and you guys just knock them down as she summons them, it's going to be a really easy boss fight. And as you can see, we make very, very quick work of her. Really not that difficult of a boss encounter. You guys are going to notice the stark difference between Banish Cells 2 and Banish Cells 1 when we do cover Banish Cells 2. Um, it's actually a pretty difficult dungeon and, and I think way, way more difficult than this. Um, but we continue down, and we're just going, going, going. And we have, again, another pack of skeletal ads. So as you can see, our tank groups them all up. But you got to watch this. The tar AoE on the ground is going to get lit on fire. There was a conal AoE from an archer. There was a charge AoE from one of the guys with the shields. So you just have to kind of worry, you know, watch out for all that stuff. Do your best to stand outside of it. Don't get caught in any of that stuff. Because if you get caught, especially in like two or three of those things, you'll take some some pretty severe damage. You'll take some pretty severe damage, even though they're, you know, it's just a couple ad packs. When those AoEs all stack up, that's when you, you do begin to run into trouble. So you kind of need to always keep moving, always keep yourself out of that stuff. Or just, you know, if you're a ranged DPS, obviously stand far back. You know, just do whatever you have to do to not be in that AoE. So we move into our next boss fight, and that is the Skeletal Destroyer. Um, so once we walk into that room, as you can see, he is uh, aggroed. And he is, again, really not overly difficult. Uh, so he starts the fight with those four scamps, and he will summon adds periodically. He will summon skeletal adds periodically. Um, so whenever those guys are summoned, just simply deal with them. But he has this big AoE stomp, as you can see around him. It's a 360 AoE, where he'll start the animation. You have a very, very high amount of advanced notice, as you can see his leg pulsing. And then he will actually just do the stomp. Boom. So he stomps on the ground. So as long as you're not standing in it, you really won't have a problem. He also has an AoE conal cleave. So as long as your tank is keeping him faced away from the group, you really will not have to deal with that. And then besides those two things, he just summons those skeletons periodically. As you can see, we knock them down very, very quickly. So they're not even in the fight all too long. And that's basically it. Skeletal Destroyer done and out of the way. Which means that our last boss fight is really all we have left, which will be High Kin Lord Rillis. But we have a bunch of ad packs to deal with uh, prior to him, probably about three or four packs of ads. Uh, so actually, you can see that pack up there. We just kind of ignore them and just keep moving down again. More of the same skeletal ads. You know, there's actually some scamps here, which will be summoning more flame AoE. So there's just going to be a lot of flame AoE in the ground. So do your best to, to obviously stay out of it. And once we keep moving, there's going to be another pack, and then there's actually a room that just has some more skeletal ads. It's just a couple ad packs prior to prior to the boss. So this one has a clan fear. Again, you got to watch the clan fears have their tail swipes. So, you know, just 
always keep aware of the AoEs. That's basically the big thing with these ad packs, and I know I'm going to sound like a, a broken record every single dungeon, but that's that's really the main the main bit of it, is you just want to not stand in the fire, you know? And I know it sounds so basic, and I know a lot of people, you know, listening to this will be like, well, duh. But when you run dungeons like this, especially if you're doing, like, a pickup group or if you're a lower level, you'll see a lot of people, they'll just, they'll just tunnel and just stand and deal their damage, but don't be that guy, you know, always be moving, always, you know, be watching what the enemies are doing so that you don't get caught and you're not the one standing in something and, and dying on just simple, uh, ad mechanics, but we move down and there's a final ad pack before we actually start King Rillis's fight. So we just deal with them really quickly, a, a mixture of, uh, skeleton and clan fear ads, so we simply knock them down, and then we will have to deal with the boss. So just going to wait while we finish off these ads. It's a good thing after this I actually put a PvE build on this guy because my DPS during this dungeon, during BC2, was just ugh, was just big oof because this is a PvP build. So really not designed for PvE. But King Rillis, once we get that ad pack, is summoned. And this is one of those where to simply activate hard mode, all you have to do is read the scroll, and hard mode will be activated. So, as you can see, our tank aggros, High King Lord Rillis, and we will start of the fight. So, the there's a couple mechanics that we got to worry about here. Um, there's two that are much more difficult than others. So, number one is the feasts. You're going to see basically these floating blue orbs moving towards High King Lord Rillis that originate on that platform he was standing on. And they will heal him if they get to him. So you need to make sure as a DPS especially to be on top of those when you see them. Another thing that he does is he does that really heavy attack um, where basically after he drops all of those big flame AoEs like you see right here. There's just a lot of flame getting summoned around the room and actually deals a considerable amount of damage. He will eventually do a heavy attack pretty soon after all those AoEs drop and you need to be blocking that or dodge rolling it or it will deal a big bit of damage. You also see him do, uh, he did a projectile ability towards our healer. He, he shot him healer with like a magic bolt and that can... One shot people that can deal a lot of damage, so you need to block that or you need to try to dodge roll it, and that will also knock you down. So, as you can see, one of our DPS did get caught by some of the mechanics, got caught in that fire there, so he could probably use this guy to low XD. But, <laughs> but that, that's the main stuff. A lot, a lot of the stuff in this fight, you need to make sure that you're blocking or that you're dodge rolling. Keep an eye on the feast and just do your best to kite that fire. That fire, especially if you get caught in multiple instances of it, will burn you down very, very quickly. So a lot of this will be on the tank to make sure that he's properly moving. Realists around the room so that the DPS are actually, especially if you have melee DPS, are in a position to... to to deal damage as you can see realist did that magic bolt towards our healer healer got knocked down didn't take uh too too much damage thankfully but he did get knocked down and did take some damage from that so you can see he is now channeling the flame attack again so be aware um a heavy attack will be coming soon and there it is so he heavy attacks our tank which he blocks it i take care of the feast and you can see another one is summoned so right now we should be hopping on that feast to make sure that it doesn't kill him uh, and there goes our other DPS and myself killing the feast. Boom. So he doesn't get healed, especially as we get so close to the end. But that's basically it for this fight, guys. That is High Kin Lord Rillish on Banish Cells 1. He's going to be much more challenging in BC2. But this, I think, is a, actually a good introduction to his mechanics in the next dungeon. Um, so not, you know, challenging, but not anything crazy but anyway guys that is it veteran hard mode banish cells one in the books i hope you guys found this guide helpful and if you were struggling with this dungeon i hope this helped clear some things up if you like this video please smack a like on it and for more great eso content black ops 4 destiny 2 just great gaming content in general i'd appreciate if you hit that sub button as well as hit the little bell to keep notifications on so you're always aware of what i'm doing here on the youtube channel so i want to thank everybody so much for stopping by today i really appreciate it as always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.